these two adorable dogs have been trying to chew their way through the house. Today we're looking at a practical 3D printing project to stop them in their tracks. People often ask me, since I have to print so much making videos for this channel, do I still enjoy it and what type of things do I print off camera? Well, today is a classic example of the type of practical project that I love doing. It's completely useless to anyone else, but it solves my need perfectly. And in this case, the need is controlling those two puppies. But before that, let's start with two other examples. To tidy up some gym equipment, I mounted this barbell holder on casters and on the inside of a built-in wardrobe door. Out of sight and out of mind. But where's the 3D printed part? Well that would be this jig I used to drill the holes in the metal barbell holder. And with this jig, everything was mounted accurately. Or how about this one? On an electronic drum set, a 3D printed base that clips onto the frame and holds the two pedals in position so they no longer slide away and across the floor. The main project for this video is to benefit my family. And since it's been a tough year for so many people for a variety of reasons, hopefully this is a feel good story. In 2019, our Black Labs Weber and Sheba, who were a much loved part of the family for 13 years, sadly passed away. Anyone who's lost a beloved family pet knows what a hole that it leaves in your life. We filled the hole in our hearts with these two, miniature schnauzers, brother and sister, named Ricardo and Sophia. Here they are on the day we took them home, just before Christmas last year, and having their first walk. Recently, they've celebrated their first birthday, and have become valuable members of the family, loving to cuddle with us as well as each other. Having been used to elderly dogs, we really were caught out by the puppy's energy and enthusiasm. When they play with each other outside, it's not a problem at all. In fact, it's quite adorable. It's more of the mischiefs they get up to inside the house that is the problem. And there is a lot of mischief. You might have heard of destructive testing. That's when you test a part so vigorously that it fails and you identify its weak points. Well, these two are absolute experts at that. If you need some shoes tested, they're happy to help. Same goes for bicycle helmets. In fact, I'd probably call them experts with those. They can also test items like drink bottles and they offer a mail opening service too. But probably the greatest treasure that they find is when a doll is left out for them to chew. Typically, they like to remove the arms and then make some alterations to the feet. This seems pretty clear cut, but funnily enough, when I question them, neither of them own up to the crime. There's been multiple valuable lessons for my kids in the importance of packing things up, but to help them keep their things safe, it's really vital that I can control where the puppies can and can't go. Luckily in our house, we have a lot of sliding doors and they work very well as barriers for keeping these two in place. There is one section, however, with a large opening and that means no door to shut. I felt pretty clever when I had cable tied on a piece of mesh to their crate door, so when I opened it far enough, it would seal off the passageway. Problem solved. How very wrong I was. One day, they managed to swing the gate open and made some more alterations to one of my daughter's dolls. The band-aid solution is to place a heavy kettlebell so the door can no longer be opened by the puppies. This works great, but it's very inconvenient. And what I really need is some sort of mechanism to latch the gate, is puppy proof, but can be hand operated easily from either side. And that's where we pick up this practical design project. The mounting on the mesh, as well as the weird angles the two halves meet are quite tricky. So I've designed this in a way that I build it section by section to leave myself flexibility down the track. Step one, as always, is to use digital calipers to take some accurate measurements. The first part I was designing would be the mount to go on either side of the mesh, so I took measurements of everything I thought would be applicable. I then went into CAD and measured out a clamping system, modelled holes for two pieces of the mesh, and constructed a two-half system to clamp from either side. But before I printed the full part, I printed these cut-down versions, and they're really good at testing the fit to make sure your measurements are correct. On the moving gate side of the mesh, everything was spot on, but when I moved them to the body mesh, it was clear that the spacing was different for that part. This test version had saved me from wasting lots of plastic. 
and that's why I always recommend printing a simplified test piece early in a project. Back in CAD, I duplicated my starting geometry, except this time changed the key dimension to get the spacing for the mesh correct. Another set of test prints and the new dimensions were verified as correct. Back to CAD to properly flesh out the design. Obviously these parts are a lot thicker, but they also have cutouts to hold captive nuts, and on the other side, a recessed section to keep the bolt tops flush. To build on, I designed two 5mm holes, doing it this way would allow me flexibility. All the parts for this video were printed on my Prusa Mini. In addition to the Bontec upgrades fitted in a previous video, I've since fitted a 0.3mm nozzle and done some pretty high quality prints. There is still some layer stacking inconsistencies here, but overall this is a really impressive print and very satisfying to play with. And that really awesome filament is Steampunk Rainbow PLA from Airy One. I switched over to black PLA to match the mesh and printed these at 0.15mm layer height. Pre-assembly was done on the bench and I designed the part that it would expand enough to slide onto the mesh so I didn't have to juggle nuts and bolts for final fitment. We simply rotate the part 90 degrees push it through the mesh, and then use a screwdriver to clamp the two halves together and hold it in place. So far so good, everything fits the way it should, and the two pieces are in rough alignment. A reference picture from above, and then back to the drawing board. My first solution for the interfacing parts was elegant in design, but not very practical in reality. And here is that first concept, and it's to have two identical hooks with a thin mount so they could flex out of the way, that would uncouple them and allow the gate to open. As you can see, the slight angle between the two halves meant that the hooks didn't quite line up, and this is a project that I want to have a final outcome that is predictable and reliable. One feature that I did keep for later designs was to have these slots for mounting, and that would allow me to rotate and align things a bit better. This is one aspect that proved successful when the printed parts were actually in place. Needing a new solution, I really wanted to design a compliant mechanism. That's when you have controlled movement in your object by way of purposely controlled thin and flexible parts, even though it's just one piece. But in the end, I opted for the KISS principle, going for a simple latch that gravity would push into place. I modified my CAD to add this geometry that a latch could hinge from. It's a pretty simple design and would print without support. Printed and in place, it looked like it was going to get the job done, but my original rectangular opening latch receiver for the other side looked hard to align, so I modified the design to have a circular hole that would be the same from any approach angle. With this one printed and in place, everything seemed to perfectly align from one side to the other, so the last job was to design the latch. And here is the final shape. Overall, it's quite simple with a couple of detailed additions. On the underside is a boss that protrudes to stop it dropping below horizontal, and because the protrusion which actually does the latching wouldn't be particularly strong with the way that it's oriented, I decided to put a hole in the top where a short M3 bolt could be screwed into place to reinforce the geometry. This part was designed to be printed without needing support material with its upper surface touching the build platform. With the latch printed, the first part of assembly was to screw in an M3 bolt. After this, I attached it to the pivot base, and this is a good chance to show how that hidden boss prevents the latch from falling down past horizontal. This will be essential for proper operation. With all of the parts only loosely mounted, I was pleased to report that the system definitely worked. This unconstrained flex should be temporary, but even with it in place, the two parts locate, and the latch is secure enough to hold the gate in position. With all of the parts properly tightened, we have faultless operation. The gate latches automatically every time, and if someone wants to go through, they simply flip it up with their finger, walk through, and close the gate behind them to leave everything secure. Personally, I'm thrilled with the solution, but I'm a little disappointed that the puppies just aren't that impressed. Maybe I can design something else for them in future. As I said in the beginning, a practical project that's absolutely useless to anyone else, but very satisfying for me to complete. And if it does need alterations, I can design and print as necessary. I'm just pleased the dogs can now do more of this without having to worry about more of this. That is of course if the kids remember to close the gate. 
Hopefully you've got some time off over the holiday period to spend with your loved ones and maybe even a little bit of time to complete a practical project of your own. If this is you, please let me know what it is down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, Merry Christmas and happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.